This Week in Disc Golf didn't have much. Only an alleged Eagle McMahon Disc Mania departure vid. Gannon Burr and Prodigy finally make it official. Macy Valadez opens a window into the trials FPO players incurred during sponsorship talks. The PDGA announces their Player and Rookie of the Year awards, and so much more. What's up, Disgenerates? It's Swiss Cheese with the Disc Golf World, and you guys already know the one with all the holes in his game. You are watching This Week in Disc Golf, trying my best to provide the humor takes on all things disc golf from the past week. If you're returning, make sure to subscribe already. For those of you who already have, thanks yet again. Let's dive into the latest Eagle news. At this point, the only ones still holding on to the hope of an Eagle McMahon return to Discmania are the brand fanboys who prefer to say Cloudbreaker rather than DD3. Fans are a full year removed from Simon announcing his departure from Discmania, and the brand has yet to respond with an announcement of re-signing Eagle. Instead, the only thing to come out from Discmania is the signings and squad post of every player with the exception of Eagle. And even with speculation of signing Gannon Burr for that entire time, most felt Eagle was the brand's top target after Simon's withdrawal. However, the silence from both parties for this long has become about as awkward as Stephen Hawkins rolling onto those Epstein flight logs. Unless you are waiting for a helicopter level announcement of signing both he and Gannon, there's almost zero chance Eagle's not going elsewhere at this point. Now cue a rumored departure video leak has many in the community saying to themselves it's about time. The alleged video was supposed to have been posted by Eagle, only for it to be turned private shortly after. There was a post on Reddit that claimed they saw the video and not only watched, but shared it to their disc golf message group. Just hold tight, because the name of the post has many questioning the validity, as self-aware meme was the one who posted the screenshot of the video on their group message. Also, the post has little to no support from others who also watched the vid so the community finds itself at a crossroads. Could this video be real and Eagle mistakenly posted the cut earlier than anticipated or when he thought he had the clearance to? It wouldn't be a first time a player has frivolously released their departure or signing well in advance of the date. And trust, mistakenly posting videos on the wrong date or time is very common. Or could this post simply be someone in the community's effort to pour gasoline on the embers of the two quiet disc golf offseason? Either way, it was enough for this and other content creators to have to mention it. Now, as far as a possible landing spot, Eagle to MVP does seem to be more and more of a likelihood as time moves on. Some are still holding out hope for Innova, but this is so against their normal business practice, it seems unlikely at this point. And apart from the House of Discs signing, I don't see any other brands in play here. That's a long way of me saying it doesn't feel like MVP. Irregardless, we are no more closer to an announcement or update of Eagle status from before you clicked on this thumbnail. Yet with rumors of Gannon's contract actually being up on the 10th, it does seem that we are inching closer to an announcement, as I believe that Gannon's announcement will come before anything from the Eagle camp. That and the fact that Gannon has made it now public that he will officially be departing Prodigy, we're getting closer. Gannon not only made a post, but Prodigy did put together a nice video thanking him for the time spent with the company, arguably the nicest thing Prodigy has done for the young thrower. Certainly wasn't those timely USDGC champion commemorative disc release, or that rookie of the year either. Gannon officially ends his seven years with Prodigy and hits the market. Gannon is fully enjoying the process also, posted a video of him mentioning nearly the slogans of every manufacturer teasing all who watched. And let's also not forget a recent cut showing he and Kyle Klein have been throwing in Florida. Some have gone even further highlighting the CEO of the House of Disc is following Gannon, hinting at a potential signing there. More than enough proof for you guys, right? Despite that, as mentioned earlier, for many, it's only a matter of time Discmania finally locks in Gannon for what now has been rumored for over a year. In fact, many are speculating that Gannon and Alden Harris are a package deal for the manufacturer. Alden announced this week that he will also be leaving Prodigy after eight years, and with the extension and promotion of Gavin Babcock, it looks like all the boys are back together, this time under Discmania. What will be interesting to see is the amount of years the 18-year-old looks to lock in. Too young for anything longer than five years, yet with the market being what it is, having some length to the contract to get through the anticipated lean years might be more wiser than a two-year deal that could see you back on the market that is in worse shape than it currently finds itself, possibly costing you with less pay than what a four-year deal would have brought. All signs are pointing to a four-year deal with Gannon, with no announcement on the financial details, and most likely a two-year deal for Alden. Another departure that has many talking, including Pros' Macy Valadez, announcing she will be leaving Dynamic. In the announcement, she shines a light of the current market, difficulty Pros see during contract negotiations. Macy goes on to mention she was approached by a few manufacturers during the season, but did want to and intended to return to Dynamic. 
Vela Diaz did receive an offer from Dynamic prior to Macy informing the brand of her pregnancy. Macy, who was pregnant and made the announcement public last week, informed the team's managers of her and her doctor's intended shortened tour due to the pregnancy. Dynamic's response was to lower their initial offer to Macy, which forced her in a position to either end the three-year relationship and face the next season with the likelihood and possibility of not having a sponsor at all for the 10 events she intended to play, or agree to sign the lower contract and play the year under Dynamic. Certainly a terrible position to be put in from a player standpoint, whether you feel the team is justified to lower their offer or not. As many pros reached out in support while acknowledging the tribulations they too have experienced. Players like Madison Walker, Cynthia Riccati, and Jennifer Allen to name a few. And it's certainly grimy business practices to put players in a lose-lose situation, and even worse when you add the fact that she is pregnant. For Dynamic to treat their best FPO player, yes, I said it, and it can't be debated any further, on their roster is yet another example of lost PR opportunities that Dynamic and many disc golf brands continue to make this offseason. And in general, support of the FPO needs to expand to all aspects surrounding the game and not focus primarily on saving them from the competition. Now for some more offseason notes. Let's start with even more departures, because in all reality, there are a lot more of those, and at least we know we have these announcements coming in the near future. Nicholas Antela leaves Discmania, a young talent that I'm sure garnered interest from a number of sponsors. Parker Welk also announced him leaving Prodigy, yet another loss of a winning pro from the Prodigy lineup. In some signing news, Emerson Keith joins Innova's champion team, a dream of his since he began playing. Also, Innova saw the return of Steve Brinser to the Innova champion squad after only a year apart, along with the return of Haley King, Germ, among others. Chandler Fry and Lucky Lorenzen both signed sponsorships with Infinite and Thought Space Athletics. Great signings for both the players and companies as this seems to be a very good fit all around. Chandler Kramer was spotted throwing some hooligan protos. And the PDGA announced both their player and rookie of the year. As for the player of the year, no surprise here, as both Vinny and Tatar had the most points going in. Didn't surprise anybody with both of their victories. In the Rookie of the Year, Paul Krantz with Discmania won in the MPO, and in the FPO it found one of the Linz twins, this one Morgan, as the Rookie of the Year winner. And let's move into some quick hitters. Ricky Wysocki's philanthropy didn't stop at his New Year's Eve invitations. Ricky posted while he was at Dynamic Warehouse for some business, he would pull some discs for a couple of fans. Ricky and Drew Gibson discussed each other's portfolios for everyone to witness, like one of those lame progressive homeowners becoming their parents' commercials. Last week, Brody announced he would begin a sports card channel with a friend. This week, he posted their first vid, hinting at a dramatic clickbait card pull and use of a very familiar red arrow. And now, we got our Brody reference quota in. Didn't want to leave you guys nothing to comment below about. All jokes aside, we wish him the best on the latest channel. And for those wanting to know, it was a CJ Stroud rookie card. Discmania auctioned one of 10 limited release Cloudstones on eBay, selling for just over $760. If you forgot, the chance to receive this disc was had if you purchased both sets of the Discmania mystery boxes. And even then, it's still random. That's certainly one way to set the market value of a disc and the entire promotion. Discmania will now be posting the other nine into random mystery boxes for the latest release. Might just be my speculation, but there is no way the value of these discs grow any higher than they are at now for this release. No one is sitting on the entire set like some Ash Ketchum and selling off the limited release years down the road. A better promotion for Discmania would be if they sold it to a Play It Against Sports for some cannonball run geomap mystery cipher for the public to solve. The new year brings on some pro heartfelt resolutions. Posts from Simon, Tatar, Cat, and Joel Freeman who is making a change and working on his course demeanor through outside assistance. Many pros have saw improvements on their all-around game. I'm hoping the same for Joel here. Conrad and Goose both got in some indoor rock climbing in. Goose didn't stop there as he also hit the slopes. There's plenty of work being made at this year's Champions Cup location, the Northwoods Black and Blue courses. There's been rumors of clearing brush and concrete being poured for some new tee pad locations, providing even more versatility for the hole layouts during the major event. B. Pablo got his first Disney trip, and the goat crushed all the Zimbabwe army saying he was chewing gum and not as Indiana Jones. Bradley Williams gets snowed in at Norway and also released his first episode of a new podcast featuring him and co-host Lucky Lorenzen. Austin Turner gives us the off-season workout mirror selfie. You know this doubled down as his Tinder profile pic later. AB shows us his lock impersonation of Ricky throwing a drive, including his patented Fernando Valenzuela look to the heavens approach. 
Isaac Robinson posted artwork by Joel Robinson that made the entire once great prodigy boys into China, Illinois characters. And that Ganon portrait is just nightmare fuel. And guys, that wraps up another twig. If you stayed this long and you aren't subscribed, make sure to do so. While you're at it, like, comment, and share. And if you want more, make sure to peek all the previous episodes. Be out on the lookout over on the Swiss Cheese Disc Golf channel, coming soon.